What's up everyone, uh, my name is Kirill and today I'm going to show you how to set up um, and configure a node for CyberD and how to run the validator on it. Um, so what is the CyberD? You probably know it's a decentralized alternative to Google and um, let's just basically step up. So first of all, um, you'll, I'll, I'm just going to follow the guide. Uh, we have on our cybercongress.ai website how to become a hero. So just feel free to open it up. Um, first thing uh, we will probably have to talk about is the um, requirements for the server. Um, you should have and should keep up to be successful in running the validator. So what do we uh, recommend uh, is a CPU six cores, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, at least 256 uh, or just to 250 gigs of uh, storage, a uh, good internet connection. And of course, um, some sort of a GeForce, um, Nvidia GeForce graphic card to calculate the rank uh, for, for the knowledge graph. Uh, with at least like six gigs of memory. It's not like very required, but the more uh, the better in this case. And we are going to do all the stuff on Ubuntu um, versions, basically any 6.18 uh, uh, is okay. Um, all right, so here I have the server, which is uh, basically uh, just, a, just a new machine. It didn't have anything on it yet. So I'm just going to basically copy and paste um, all the instructions uh, from, from the guide uh, step by step um, to make it like very clear and reproducible. First of all, we will need the Go installed on our machine. So just grabbing the archive with it. Uh, we're currently using the SDK version uh, which supports only Go version 1.13 so just do not install like anything newer like 14 version it's just a SDK requirement currently um, so I downloaded it then we will go ahead and untar it to the destination folder all right and to make it usable and clear uh, we'll have to add the Go binaries location to path. Um, we'd wise to use something like bash rc or something like that to store all those variables. So just basically to the end of this file, copy, export, path, save it and do source. Um, and let's go ahead and check up uh, which version do we have. I mean, is it is it installed correctly or not? So yeah, we have it. Go one thirteen. All right, uh, we have go installed. Then we'll go ahead and proceed with the Nvidia drivers. Just hitting enter here to install it may take a second or two okay running up to update okay installing driver up Okay, this command should show us um, something like this. Basically, we'll see the model of the card we have on our machine. I believe it should be something like RTX 2080 here. Yep, here is it showing up. And the most recent version of driver we have available for it. So it's the 440. Any driver uh, since the version 
for uh, 10 is okay so we just go ahead and do auto install uh, which will install for us uh, the version 440 while it's installing um, it's it is very important actually about the driver version because if you have the card with a sufficient amount of, amount of memory uh, and if it will not support at least 410 version of driver nothing would work actually so just pay attention to it and check up um, your card compatibility before you will attempt to set up something All right, it may take a couple minutes to install the driver. It is actually required to do a restart after driver is installed. Okay. Basically, while it's installing, I'm just going to say something about the RAM. Um, amount of RAM is a, is a good question. Many people uh, who are trying to uh, run our node is asking this question, how many RAM I should have at least. Um, I did a little research on this uh, topic and I posted all the results at our blog. Uh, so you may just go ahead and um, at our forum, sorry. Um, it's basically uh, hidden under the same Cyber Congress IE, but II, Cyber Congress AI. Just go ahead and check this up. So the, um, the least amount of RAM which is possible currently is uh, 10 gigs. So um, same as the driver version for the card. Um, if you have the last, you may not even try to um, run something because it would simply just not work very well. Okay, we got everything installed. We go ahead and restart. Oh, and one more thing I probably forget to talk about uh, is uh, we recommend to uh, do all the installations from the root user, which is important because um, there is some permissions you should be very careful uh, with and uh, some flags you should be very um, careful in setting up uh, when doing it under the normal user so our like general recommendation is to run everything from root okay let's go ahead and check up if we have the driver installed correctly and it seems like we are all right it's 440 version our card is here it seems to be fine Okay, then we should go ahead and uh, proceed with the CUDA Toolkit installation. It's pretty straightforward, just up install. And to check the version, we should run the NVCC version. Any version above uh, 9.1 is okay here. And no reboot is required as far as I remember. Okay, seems like it's installed. Let's go ahead and check the version. And what we have here, version 10.1, which is okay. All right, so that's basically it for preparation. And let's go ahead and step up to CyberD itself. Uh, first of all, uh, we'll have to configure uh, some environmental variables uh, which we recommend to save somewhere like a Bosch RC file or something like that to make them persistent. So you may just go ahead and um, open the Bosch RC or ATC profile, whatever you would like to um, and copy and paste those variables here um, that will point to home of your user which um, I'm expecting to be root uh, and just go ahead and save it okay and do source for this file 
to export those variables. All right. So just creating those folders uh, which are required to store the binaries um, in a correct place uh, to make it possible to use uh, online like live upgrades for for the chain if, if some will happen okay we're done with those and then we we will need to grab and compile the cosmos d uh, this is basically the diamond uh, for for the like an upgrade manager for the chain okay chain direction okay and then just running go build for it it'll take a second to build actually okay So then we should move our um, Cosmos D to our diamond home directory and uh, add some executable permissions mm -hmm. to it. All right, stepping backwards and cloning the repo for Go Cyber itself. Make sure you will check out uh, to master branch. Okay, we're already on master. And then we should go ahead and build the CUDA kernel. Uh, this is basically the code uh, which is responsible for all uh, CUDA calculations. And we're ready to proceed with a Compiling CUDA kernel for CyberD, okay, uh, successfully copied, and then we can go ahead and um, step back to our Go Cyber Repo folder and run and like actually build the binaries for CyberD and CyberD CLI. Running make build here. Okay, looks like we build. And then let's uh, go ahead and copy our binaries to appropriate locations. And add the permissions um, to execute for our diamond file. Okay, seems like we are ready to initialize the daemon. Um, just tap to the folder where it's sitting. And call the init command. And just don't forget to put your uh, node moniker here without any quotes. Call it immortal. All right, cool. Um, we have all the stuff popped up from CyberD, so that means it's initialized. Let's step backwards to our .cyberd folder. Okay, as we might see, we have the config folder up here, data folder and upgrade manager we created earlier. Um, so uh, then we should um, step to config folder and pull the correct genesis file. 
Uh, first of all, let's see, yeah, we have the auto-generated one, so uh, we can just uh, go ahead and download the new one, it will be replaced. Automatically. And while it's downloading, the next step will be to configure um, actual config uh, file for uh, for CyberD. Uh, so um, the main thing we like basically need to put in there is um, peers, persistent peers, uh, for now to get connected. Um, so um, yeah, I have, I have the link here for our forum to find the most recent and available peers. So let's go ahead and uh, open the config toml file. Mm, find the point with, um, with the peers. Yep, peer is it. And I'm just going ahead and copy some. I know it's working for sure. So they just um, come here, comma separated. All right, saving it. Okay, and we are pretty much ready to proceed with the launching. Uh, we'll go ahead and upgrade the file limit. Uh, this is like required by Tendermint currently. And then we'll go ahead and create a service for CyberD. Uh, we'll run it as a systemd service. So basically just copying it, uh, all these stuff, uh, which will point our service to the correct location. We should change here um, the users and path to our actual cyber D folder. Okay, seems to be fine. Saving it. All right, here's the some instructions for um, for the REST server. If you need to run it, just uh, follow them up. I'm not going to set it up at this at this case and after we configured all the system d files we need to reload the daemon and let's go ahead and try to start the uh, cyber d to check what's going on with that uh, just open the journal cdl okay it looks like it's applying genesis this might take up to uh, like three, five minutes from this point because uh, we have a lot of uh, accounts in our Genesis file. It's like more than a million, uh, million of uh, Ethereum accounts, uh, like 10 thousands of Cosmos accounts. So yeah, I just need a, needed some time to proceed it. Okay, cool. Seems like we have it applied. And then we'll just go ahead and try to dial some peers, establish connection with them, and start syncing the process. It may require some time to discover peers and establish connection with them, which is a, which is fine that it's just doing this um, dialing. All right, and here is it started syncing. At this step, I'm just going to quiet this view for now, and I'm going to speed up the synchronization process with a backup file, um, just basically backup of the data with the most recent chain state. Um, if you're doing um, the same setup, you may just go ahead and uh, ask for, uh, for backup in our Telegram channel. Google, uh, so yeah, somebody will serve you with a, uh, or you may just um, 
sing the note yourself um, but it may take up to a couple days maybe at this state all right, so I've just decided to show up the process how to basically restore uh, the chain data from the backup. So usually we're sending the um, links to um, zipped or tarred archives with the data. So what I have here is an archive uh, on block um, 798 thousands approximately. I untarred it and have the folder called save data um, uh, with the actual backup inside of it. So um, we need to stop the uh, CyberD before um, messing up with any data. So just doing the service CyberD stop. And then I'm going to remove um, data folder from CyberD. Okay, and then I'm going to move uh, this save save data to CyberD and call it data, same as it was. And that basically it. Um, we ready to start back up the node. And let's see how we going to operate under the hood all right thanks all the cyber gods it's applied and started let's see which block do we have yeah it's a basically um, almost on the height of the current backup so then we might just go to our cyber page and check um, what is the current current block yeah it almost 800,000 so it will take a couple, couple more minutes to sync up for for the node let's see how many we have Yeah, just a few thousand blocks, so it should not take very long. And while it's going um, in the background, uh, I'll just probably go ahead and show up a few, um, few things here in our cyber page. Uh, this is basically act as the explorer, chain explorer. You may find the validators list here. Uh, you may um, transfer. Um, the eagle tokens if you have the ledger and just adding your uh, ledger to the pocket up there um, you may check up the um, transaction by the hash pasting the hash in, uh, in the search bar or checking the address um, by pasting the uh, cyber address to the search bar basically act like a normal explorer um, all proposals um, whatever like is here um, and then to uh, while the node is syncing up to the top, uh, we should just prepare um, the keys to start up the validator. I've already added the key which had some EEL tokens um, to this node. Let's see. Yep, here is it. So, um, and of course, to start the node and make a validator transaction, you'll need some eels. Um, to get them, you may just um, navigate to our cyber page and find the file set we sort of um, have there. It's just currently acting as an auction. Um, you may just um, come up here and place a bid for a few like um, dozens of um, 
ETH coins, like very, very low amounts, and gain some uh, yield tokens. Or you may just come up and ask in our um, Telegram chat. Maybe somebody will share with you if it would be generous enough. Um, all right, let's see what's going on with the node. Almost there. Let's prepare the validator transaction. All right, to start the validator, we will need the um, node pop key, which we can get by running this command. Okay, and then this long, long command, I'm going to copy it and add it here. Here you might set your commission for your validator. I'm going to put zero for this one. You may put wherever you would like to. This is percents. So flag from uh, should be followed with the name of your key, which is mortal in my case. Then node nickname is whatever you would like to I'll put immortal immortal again pop key of the node as what we queried previously okay And here in amount, you should put amount of eels uh, you would like to delegate instantly to your um, validator. I'll probably put something like nine giga eels. One, two, three, one, two, three, three, and one more zero. Okay. I'll go ahead and copy this command for now and check up what's going on with the node. All right, box is ticking, so we are up to date. Okay, I'm going to um, go ahead and set up the create validator transaction. Best freeze. And confirm and press raise again. All right, cool. Seems like we have it submitted. The code is zero. Let me go ahead and grab the TX hash and check this up in our explorer. All right, seems like we're cool. Let's go ahead and check up the Heroes, yeah, the number is 15, so we should be good to go. Yep, and here is it. Our validator appeared. When we click on it, see some details about the delegation shares, um, some commissions, which I put as zero, um, and basically some useful info. The fans here will be displayed, uh, whoever will stake to your validator. Okay, and just uh, one probably last thing about the um, validating. If you somehow get jailed, which is not very cool, but don't be afraid of it, um, you'll have to use this tx slashing on jail um, command as soon as your chain is uh, back synced up. And technically, that should be it. Uh, if you have any troubles uh, running um, this guide or setting up our node, uh, do not hesitate. Come up to our chat via Google and Telegram. We will be always will be happy to help you uh, with whatever the troubles you'll have. All right, that should be it. Thank you for today. Bye bye.